Good morning. 40 weeks officially. I'm a day past my due date. I'm waiting for a baby any day now. But today's motivational walk I wanted to talk about. Usually we know about five. Um, the five points of health and fitness, right? We know diet or nutrition, exercise, movement. We know sleep. We know relaxing or your mindfulness. What's the fifth? Can't think of it right now. But I'm gonna add a sixth one to that. And I know you're gonna be like, what is this all about, right? But I feel like there's one very important one we always forget, and that's finances. What does financing have to do with health and fitness? I don't know about you, but when my money's not right, my head is not right. So that's what I'm gonna talk to you about today. And the reason for this talk is because I see the writing on the wall. The economy's not doing great. I don't know if you've been following the stock market. It's been down for the last two years. And food prices, gasoline prices, everything is up, right? Even things like getting maintenance done, home improvements, everything is through the roof. Let me tell you a little story. When I was in college, I got myself into a lot of debt. Reason being, first, you're young, dumb and naive. Second, credit cards are so easy, right? Third, I was paying my way through college, so I didn't want to get a loan, but whatever I couldn't afford would go on a credit card, books, gas, food. And let me tell you, we lived poor, poor. By that time I had moved in with my husband and we could barely make ends meet. Working McDonald's job, going to school, paying for transportation, driving to LA almost every day. It was difficult. And plus the extra stuff, partying, restaurants, you know, going out, whatever. So by the time I was out of college, I think I was six thousand dollars in debt with a, a loan to finish my credential because it got too expensive and then about twelve thousand dollars in credit card debt because whatever money we were bringing in was just not enough plus the extra spending right because i was not home cooking so it was a lot but it took a toll on my body right when we're stressed when we feel like things aren't going our way, what do we do? Especially for me, many of us, we eat our feelings. So what would I do? I would stop at the fast food place on the way home and say, hey, I deserve this. I worked really hard. Or I've had a stressful day at school or it took me an hour and a half to drive home or whatever it was, was I deserve this, right? So mind you, we have this huge debt and I took it on like a challenge. Started reading books about how to um, get out of debt, watch shows. And there was this one lady, I don't remember her name. I know she has like a YouTube channel. I'll, I'll get back to you on that. But this lady had this great advice. Anytime you're uncertain if you should buy something, you should ask yourself, do you need it or do you want it? So I started changing the way I would go grocery shopping, right? You see a cart full of stuff and then I would literally stop at the checkout and what do I need and what do I want? And it was a great way to change my mentality of, I need all this stuff, right? We're consumerists, we love to have stuff but our houses get full of stuff. And then our credit cards through the roof, right? So it kind of changed my mentality of do I need it or do I want it? If you want it and can't afford it, put it back. And little by little, 
I started um, listening to um, Dave Ramsey. He's kind of old school in his teachings, but some of it are really good. First, like any diet or any life transformation, you don't do the biggest, most challenging thing at first, right? If you're gonna start working out, you don't start training for a marathon or you don't um, do a Ironman that weekend, right? What's gonna happen? You're not able to sustain that and it's gonna discourage you because it's huge and it's overwhelming and either you're not gonna complete it and you're gonna fail or you're just not gonna try. So instead of thinking of the big thing, Dave Ramsey just says, start with the smallest debt. So then I looked at, put everything out. We laid all our cards on the table. How much does this credit card have as a balance? How much does this one? What can we transfer as a balance transfer and save money? Um, you know, what has the highest interest? Uh, and then we made a plan. And it was literally like a diet for finances. Every month, gather our money, this much for food, this much for going out, this much for the bills, and then everything else for the cards. And we did that. When I tell you when we've been in a financial debt or in a financial diet, I really go on a diet. But after I get into that habit, I kind of loosen up a little bit. So I see it the same way as fitness and health. Like I put myself on a strict diet and I get the habits and the ones that are easy to stick to, then I keep those, right? Because it's so hard to take on everything all at once. But let me tell you, I think it took us about a year to get out of debt. And it was rough. I'm not going to say it wasn't. But we did it. And it was like a huge burden off my shoulders, right? And then I learned that I can do it. Because if you could do it once, you could do it again. So, fast forward, maybe a few years later when we first had our two sons and I had to stay home. I decided to stay home, right? It was my choice. But I had to get on a financial diet again because my husband was only working and it wasn't nearly as much money as it makes now. And we had two small kids on diapers, you know, it was difficult. But I went back to that financial diet. And this time I took it even more seriously. Little envelopes with the budget for the month, pay my mortgage, pay my insurance, pay the bills, Everything else went into little envelopes. Spending money, grocery money, uh, vacation money, savings money. And guess what? We made it through. We made it through with no debt. And I was, I was able to do it. But it's only to share with you that it's possible. It's totally possible to be out of debt. It's just having that mentality of I don't want to live like this anymore and I don't want to have this huge burden on my shoulders every day right because it's so easy to go to Starbucks and spend five six dollars on a coffee or get a muffin with it and be eight nine ten dollars right so easy to make that the habit but when you learn to reward yourself instead of a daily habit it changes your mentality so what if instead of buying that drink today and that muffin or that lunch you put that in your savings that exact amount so that it's a reward and then you're saving towards that debt that you want to pay off or that vacation you want to take or that class you want to do or whatever activity you have plans for right so just a little way of think about it start with the smallest thing have it be like a snowball effect start small and you keep adding things as you get used to it. And the next thing you know, you've created an avalanche 